Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Our group will present about comparative analysis between the application of Sama and Setu in Islam. The group members are Anis Syahidah binti Alias, Nur Syakirah binti Mak Fazil, Uzanita binti Zamani, Nur Afiqah Nazihah binti Omar Ruslan and Nur Bani binti Mansur. Next, the objective of this video is first, to identify the difference between the Sama and Sertu in Islam. Second, to explain Muslim scholars' view on Sama and Sertu. And third, to describe the method of Sama and Sertu. Okay, we moving on to the definition of Sama. Definition of Sama is to purify the skin of animals other than dogs and pigs under certain conditions. Okay, usually Sama will be using when producing goods like a uh, bag, shoes, uh, and close. This method of pur purification abolishes foreign matter, flesh, fat, mucus, and tissue by using substance. The dalil of sama is from a hadith. It is released by Muslim. In the hadith, it said that the skin that is being tamed, it become pure. Second, the opinions of Muslim scholar. According to Shafi'i scholar, Hanafi scholar, and some Hanbali scholars, that the one way to purify the skin of carcass animal is through the process of tanning. So, according to these scholars, uh, pem practicing tanning is permissible in purify the skin animals. Now, we continue the types of feather for the tanning process. From the Islamic perspective, the skin is divided based on the types of animals. Firstly, the skin of halal animals, as an example, skin from the cow and sheep. Halal animals mean the animals that are permissible to be consumed by Muslim. It can be in two situations, either the, either the skin from the slaughtered or not slaughtered animal. Slaughtering is the act cutting the trachea, esophagus and both carotid arteries and jugular veins. So, the determination of the skin from halal animals that slaughter or not is depending on compliance with Sharia law. Secondly, the skin of non-halal animals. As an example, skin from the crocodile and lion. Non-halal animals are prohibited to consume by Muslim. There are few categories fall under non-halal animals, which is the predator and the animals that have fangs and talons. And lastly, the skin of dogs, pigs and their derivatives. These skin are widely used in the non-Muslim country in their production, such as production of wallets and belts. This skin is more affordable compared with the cow skin as the qualities and appearance are very similar. Next, from the industry perspective, the leather is divided based on the grade of qualities. Firstly, the full grain leather. It is the leather made from the top of the skin layer that has not undergone surface alterations. As a result, the leather has a high quality, a high quality surface and have a lot of attractive characteristics. Secondly, top grain leather. The leather is produced from a split that comes from the blemish of the top layer of skin. It begins by removing the original surface of the grain and replacing it with artificial grain. As a result, the leather needs to undergo the alteration process to compensate for the lack of natural structure. Next, corrected grain leather. It is produced from the upper part of the skin layers, remaining from the top that is split off. The leather being spray painted and bossed with a leather like pattern to resemble natural appearance. As the result, the surface of layers is slightly refined and sanded. And for the last, bonded leather. It is made from the leftovers of the skin that includes the dust and shavings. Usually, the product also used spray painted to produce the product that looks like top grade leather. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, moving on to the next topic, which is method of sama. The method for sama is first, we separate the skin of the animal from the body. And next, we remove uh, all hair, mucus, blood, or fats, uh, or any other substances that are attached to the skin. And then, we Peel the skin by rubbing or soaking the skin with water mixed with the tools that have been explained before. And finally, we wash the skin with clean water and soak up till it dry. As you can see, there are a list of tools 
that can be used for sama which are manjakani, tawas, lime beetle uh, which is kapu sireh, lime, limau or vinegar and chemical product. All of these ingredients uh, is being used uh, to help remove any mucus, fat, blood and meat or any other substance that are attached to the skin which can decay. So, by using this, uh, it helps to remove this substance easier. I would like to explain the hukum on fur and animal skin. We go to hukum on animal skin first that has been categorized into three. The skin of all animals except dogs and pigs and then the hukum of dead animals Lastly, the ruling of dogs and pigs skin. We move to the first category, the ruling of all animal skins except dogs and pigs. All kinds of animal skins become purified by tanning, whether the skin of halal animals permissible or haram to be eaten. Permissible to be eaten such as cows and camels. For the examples of haram to be eaten are snacks, cats or carnivores. Accordingly, any skin that has been tanned comes under the ruling of purification whether the animal is absolutely pure or impure. Majority of Islamic scholars' opinion is the skin of the animals permissible to be eaten is pure before and after slaughter, whether it is tanned or not. Dalil for this opinion is based on the following hadith, which means when the skin is tanned, it becomes purified. Next, dead animals. According to the viewpoint of Shafi'i, Hanafi and some scholars of Hanbali, the skin of animal carcasses whose meat halal to eat or haram to eat will be pure after tanning, except the carcass of pigs and dogs. There is a hadith about the dead animals. Then the Prophet Muhammad replied, Tanning it purifies it. It is clear that the carcass that was originally as unclean, such as tiger, can be purified and used if it is tanned. While Maliki and some scholars of Hanbali views is the skin of dead animals cannot be purified through tanning. The reason is the Prophet ever said. I was given rusah to you regarding the skin of dead animals of carcasses. Now, don't make use of the skin and sinew of dead animals. The last one is the ruling of dogs and pig skin to four mazhab. The opinion of Maliki scholar, the skin is considered as unclean when it dies and cannot be purified by tanning. Next, Hanafi scholar, the pig skin is unclean and cannot be tanned. However, in this mazhab, Dark skin can be purified through the process of tanning. Shafi'i scholar, the skin is unclean when it is lost, when while its death is more uncleanness because of the carcasses. Therefore, shoes, wallet, and clothes that were made by pig skin, its impurity cannot be removed, as it is a physical impurity. For that reason, Muslim has to keep away the goods. The last one is the opinion of Hanbali scholar. All kinds of carcasses are unclean, najis, including the pig skin. We move to the hukum on fur. It can be divided into three categories. Halal animals to be eaten, haram animals to be eaten, and the fur of dead animals. We go through the ruling of the fur of halal animals to be eaten. The viewpoint of all scholars is the fur of all permissible animals, such as sheep and cows, that taken while it is alive is pure. The other one, the hukum of animals that impermissible to eat, such as the fur of tiger and bear, Shafi'i scholar opinions is the fur is considered as najis. In contrast, Maliki and Hanafi scholars state the fur in this category is clean. Next, the hukum of dead animal's fur. Dead animals can be divided into two. In case of unslaughtered halal animals that die naturally and the animals whose meat haram to eat, 
The views of Shafi'i scholar is the full included as Najis, while Maliki and Hanafi scholar opinions is the full will be pure after tenning. The second one is the hukum of halal animals that dies by slaughtering. The opinions of Shafi'i, Maliki and Hanafi schools that the fur is clean, not najis. This opinion is based on the surah An-Nahlu verse 80. As for Hanbali scholar, all kinds of carcasses are unclean. So, the hukum of fur are also unclean. Next, we go to the satu. The definition of satu is to purify any part of the body that is exposed to the Mughala Jasos by purifying it using one portion of brown water and six time portion of ab absolute water. Okay, the definition of Najis Mughala za are something that was sourced from dog or pig or descendants, both of them. There is a hadith that narrated from Abu Hurairah. He said that the container that is being leaked by dog, it need to purify it by washing seven times. And the first wash must be mixed with soil. And according to Shafi'i, Maliki and Hanbali scholar, during the sertu, it is necessary to wash seven times. Hi and Assalamualaikum. Next, we will focus on the method of sertu. Sertu can be known as a purification, cleaning, or cleansing. It's a method that owes a symbolic purpose as required in Islam. Also, it is, pur it is to purify and cleanse one's body, items, or area. Basically, any clothing, accessories, or any area that come contact with dog or pig, that which known as najil muqalaza, which is heavy najis, need to purify using certain method. It is to cleanse the najis. Every part of the dog or pig is considered najis, whether it comes from the hair, sweat, or saliva. Here is certain process of cleaning. First, it is required to wash seven times, one of which shall be water mixed with soil. Second, the first wash shall to clear the existence of najis. Third, the water from first cleansing shall continue with the second wash. Fourth, the amount of soil used is just enough to make a suspension. Fifth, the use of cleansing agent containing soil is permitted. For example, a soap. And the last one, make sure the discharge of the cleansing water gone into proper drainage. In a simple word, certain process of cleaning means cleansing of the affected area or part seven times, wash using water mixed with soil, and six washes with mutlak water.